like one professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about how you can get input from the user and use that in your C++ programs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to pound include IO stream. That's because that will give us access to the CN object. And the CN object is what we're going to use as part of a statement, a CN statement to get the input from the user. So we're going to use the CN object. And we're also going to use this operator here called the stream extraction operator. So the format for the CN statement to get input is this CN. Then we're going to have that operator and then we're going to have a variable. So let's look at an example. So let's say that I create a variable X and then I want to get a value from the user, an integer from the user and store it in that variable X. I'm going to use CN X just like that. And once this statement executes, you know, the user is going to have a cursor flashing in front of them. They're going to type a number in response. And that number is going to go from the keyboard from CN console input into the X variable. So you can take a look at these operators right here and you can think kind of think of it as where the data is going, where it's coming from, where it's going. So CN is tied to the keyboard. So CN basically means keyboard. You can think of it that way equals the keyboard. And so here we're taking data from the keyboard and we're pushing it into X and then we can display that to the user. So we can do something like this. We can say C out X, right? So in this case, we're taking the data from X and we're sending it to the screen, right? Whereas in the previous statement, we're taking uh, data from the keyboard from the user if in effect and putting it into X. So um, let's see that in action and let's put a little pause in here. Okay, so cn.r, cn.get. Now let's see how that works. Okay, so you can see that we've got a blinking cursor there, right? It's waiting for the user to, to do something. So I'm gonna type six. Okay, so I'm gonna type that six, that's gonna go into our X, and then we're gonna see out X. And so you see the six appears on the screen. Now it's kind of confusing just having the user stare at a blinking cursor. So what we want is we want to have something called a prompt, right? So we're telling the user to do something. So we'll say something like this, see out, enter and integer. Okay, so now when we run our program, they're going to see this string right here, enter an integer, and then the cursor is going to be blinking. And then, you know, they'll be able to type their response and they'll get stored into X. And then, you know, maybe we'll put a little label here. This is known as a label for labeling your output. So we'll do something like this. See out, you entered. Okay, so we'll see that on the screen and then uh, the contents of X right after that. So let's check it out. Let's see it. Okay, so enter an integer. There's that prompt we were talking about. And I'll type this time, um, you know, 42. Okay, so that 42 gets stored inside of X. And then, you know, because of this statement right here, and then line 16 executes, we see our label, you entered, and then we put the contents of X on the screen. Okay, so it's really kind of that easy. Um, now, we can store multiple values or get multiple values at once in a CN statement. So we can do something like this. We could say um, enter two integers separated by a space. Okay, so I'll create another integer variable up here, y, and then we'll say you entered x and we'll put the contents of y. Okay, so this is like that. So now the way we modify our CN statement here is we just use another stream extraction operator and then we put our second variable there. So we have to separate, you know, the user has to separate their input with a type with a space. That's how the CN using these operators knows, you know, when the first value ends and the next value begins and it's that space. So, you know, if I type something like five space six, then the five will go into X and then CN will say, oh, there's a space. That means that I'm done with the five, put it inside of X, and then it'll go on to the six and then put that into Y. So let's go ahead and test that. Okay, so five and six. And so you can see, you know, you entered five and six. I guess I didn't need a comma there, did I? Okay, so let's tie all of this together and we'll write a sample program that uses um, floating point numbers this time. So we'll do something like this. We'll write a program that will calculate the area of a rectangle. Okay, so we're gonna need two variables. So we'll do um, a double variable for holding the length 
and we'll do one for holding the width. Okay, so this way we can have decimal places. So I'm going to have um, I'm going to have an algorithm that looks kind of like this. I'm going to ask the user for the length. Then I'm going to ask the user for the width. Then I'm going to calculate the area, and the area is equal to length times the width. And then I'm going to display the area to the user. Okay, so that's my algorithm. So we'll just go and we'll ask the user for the length. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm going to need to, I'm going to further develop my algorithm here. I'm going to need to prompt the user and I'm going to need to store their input in length. And then when I ask the user for the width, I'm going to need to prompt the user and then I'm going to need to store their input in width, right? So that's what I do. That's my logic. So let's do it. So let's prompt the user and we'll do C out, enter the length of a rectangle. Okay, so that's that. And then we'll store their input in length. So we'll do that. Okay, now let's go to our next step. So we'll just continue on here. We'll ask the user for the width. So we have to prompt the user. So we're gonna do C out, enter the width of a rectangle, and then we're gonna store their input in width. So C in width. Now what's the next step? Calculate the area. So we'll create a variable called area, and then we will do area equals length times width. Okay, now that since that's done, we're just about there. So now we'll tell the user the area of the rectangle. The area of your rectangle is, and then we'll just display the contents of area, and then we will be done. So let's test that. Okay, so enter the length of a rectangle. So we'll say uh, 2.5. Enter the width of a rectangle, we'll say 1.2. And then we see here that the area of your rectangle is three. So now you know how to use the CN object to get input from the user and use it in your C++ programs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.